welcome thank you again dear viewer for listening and uh, we are in our hub identification class where we identify what god has given us in nature the common hubs that we have around and the in-depth study about them and how we can systemically approach disease we need to know that in the end time as the uh, ag uh, as the agitations uh, towards the national sunday law is being uh, hosted on the minds of people and brainwashed and people being uh, put in a slumbering mode god's people are to arise to agitate on the health principles as well as the word of god and so while there is still time and opportunity right now we need to learn a disease its causes prevention and cure for we shall find labor in every place that we go now that is so important for me to understand and for you to understand do not just sit there and think that the world is going to a prosperous and a peaceful mode never it will never be so in fact we are going through difficult times the bible says in matthew chapter 24 and verses 6 and 7 and 8 that there will be diverse uh, pestilences and earthquakes and wars and rumors of wars everywhere and we can see it today with the crisis of the health crisis the agricultural crisis the marital crisis and also the injustice that are facing the world today. What will the wise man do when he's living in these days? The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verses 5, that the wise man discerneth uh, times and judgment, and this makes him to know what he ought to do in the right time. We are in the preparation time, receiving the the power of the Holy Spirit, the great light is shining upon the people. People are rising up and we need now to come to the plan of God of restoration. Jesus Christ is waiting for you and me to do that work. And so, if you are having some principles in your life that are not lead, leading, uh, leading you well, you don't find time to study the Word of God. You don't find time to pray. You don't find time to minister to your people. And using the talent that God has given you, then you know that you are treading on a dangerous ground. And God is educating us today that we need to know these remedial agencies to help us to stay fit for eternity. Our class today, we are going to handle uh, this common remedy, and that is rosemary. The botanical name or the scientific name is Salvia rosmarinus, and it is known for the protection of the heart. The cumarin is the major chemical compound that we have in rosemary. Now, this is the plant I believe that most of people have identified it and knows it and even grows it in their backyard. But still, there is a work for us to do to know its medicinal properties. So, rosemary is an evergreen bushy shrub which grows along the Mediterranean Sea and sub Himalayan areas. In folk medicine, it has been used as an antispasmodic. It means if someone goes on a conversion or someone is having jack jacking of the body system, you take the, uh, the rosemary. The part used is mostly the leaves. The fresh leaves are better. In folk medicine, it has been used as an antispasmodic male analgesic to cure intercostal neuralgia, headaches, migraines, insomnia, emotional upset, and depression. And different investigations have highlighted rosemary neuropharmacological properties as their main topics. And rosemary has significant antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, anti-apoptotic, anti-tumorigenic, anti 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 anti
properties. And furthermore, it shows important clinical effects on mood, learning, memory pain, anxiety, and sleep. So it is good for your nervous system. It is loaded plant that has a lot of uh, medicinal properties. And it is known as antioxidants and it is known to have antioxidant and anti-inflammatory compounds and uh, which are thought to boost and help the immune system and improve blood circulation. Basically, where there is perfect flow of blood, there is perfect health because blood brings it with, with it nutrients and amino acids, the minerals, the vitamins, and remove the toxins. And where there is no circulation of the blood, there is a problem. How do you know that you have improper blood circulation? You'll be having numbness on your extremities, on your fingers, on your toes, and sometimes you will be having um, lightheadedness, and sometimes pain in some areas, the extreme areas. Laboratory studies have shown rosemary to be rich in antioxidants, which play an important role in neutralizing harmful particles called free radical. And rosemary is often used to help treat indigestion. It enhances memory and concentration. And according to research outline, in therapeutic advances in psychopharmacology, the aroma from a rosemary can improve a person's concentration, performance, speed, and accuracy, and to a lesser extent, their mood. If you want to know that we are having a, 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 a wiser God, and a merciful God is what he has put in nature. It is only that we are not ready to learn. Any herb that is having aromatic effect, like the peppermint, the lemongrass, the rosemary, the tropical mint, and the sage, all these uh, have the medicinal properties of healing the whole system, toning down your system, and that is why it relieves stress. And when we'll be going through our prenatal and postnatal and pregnancy uh, class, we'll be able to go across all loads of uh, aromatherapy principles that are going to help women to lessen the, uh, the, the labor time and also calm down their system. Although there's pain, but there is, it is a pain that can be accommodated. And uh, rosemary is known to help your system to relax. It has neurological protection. Scientists have found that rosemary may also be good for your brain. It contains an ingredient called carnosic acid, which can fight off damage by predatory in the brain. Now, the brain takes two years to redevelop and restructure. The cells are very difficult to restore. Of course, it needs a lot of vitamin E, a lot of B complex, as well as uh, rejuvenating factors like the, uh, the biotin, the niacin, the vitamin B6, and uh, the folic acid. And uh, if you all put that together, you are able to restore your brain self. Some studies in rats have identified that rosemary might be useful for people who have experienced a stroke. And stroke is just insufficient supply of blood to the brain cells because of the arterial plug buildup. Rosemary appears to be protective against brain damage and might improve recovery. You have to start circulation. And most of the time when someone is having stroke, you have to put him on a circulatory herbs or remedies and uh, limit any glucose surge into the system. Drink a lot of water, do a lot of hot and cold fermentation using the water therapies, cold sheet treatment, um, using uh, cold sprays on the spinal cord, using hot foot bath, which may be tricky with someone who is paralyzed, but hot fermentation will be very, very effective on those areas. And it helps in preventing aging. Some studies have suggested that rosemary may significantly help prevent brain aging. 
The therapeutic ability to rosemary for prevention of Alzheimer's shows promise, but more studies are needed. But I want to tell you that what God has put in nature is very effective. And uh, most of those who are having uh, senility, Alzheimer's or memory loss, who takes uh, rosemary tea are able to recover from, uh, from these difficulties. There is a program that uh, you can put yourself into to make sure that you remove the, um, you remove the toxins like uh, aluminum or the lead or the mercury in your brain. And that is taking tamarind tea. If you take tamarind tea every day, you are able to, uh, to protect yourself against the, uh, against the heavy metals that feed or marinate themselves within your brain and then kill the dead, uh, are neurotoxic to your brain cells. You're taking tamarind, when you're taking tamarind tea every day, about twice a day, about three inch turmeric seeds, usually fruit, sorry, fruit of ripe tamarind, and taking it daily, it's able to help your system to boost immunity as well as removing those toxic elements. Another thing is using a cilantro juice. Cilantro is, uh, is a so-called dania or uh, it's also called, uh, uh, forgetting the name, but you need to make a juice of it and then drink that every day. You can add it with the parsley and this will just able to detoxify you from Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, and Gaylurex disease. Just so important for you to know. Now, another thing that we need to know about turmeric is just cancer. Uh, it helps to feed on scavenged uh, in free radicals. What are free radicals? These are substances that are highly affected have high affinity for, uh, for, for some ions to attach into. We can get them into the system by eating um, foods that are anti, that are histamine in nature and also foods that are having, uh, uh, that are having genes that have been incorporated in them that are not natural. That is why genetically modified food is very dangerous for your system because it is not able to pair well with your system. And so it destroys uh, the body. And for that repair to take place, it is very difficult. So you need to eat properly organic foods. We are calling people to go to the natural ways of uh, of, uh, of food preservation as well as restoration of seeds. We need to get those seeds that are having high power to re, uh, reprogenate again and again. So research published in oncology reports found that crude ethanoic rosemary extract showed the spread of human leukemia, slowed the spread of human leukemia and breast cancer cells. And uh, that should be a good news for us. It protects against macular degeneration. A study that is published in the Journal Investigative Ophthalmology in Visual Science led by Dr. Stewart uh, and colleagues at Stanford say that, uh, that canosic acid, which is found in, uh, in rosemary, is a major component uh, that can promote high health. This could have clinically application for diseases affecting the outer retina, such as age-related macular degeneration. Now, macular de de degeneration is affecting many people because we are in an environment that is polluted, and most people do not take the green leafy vegetables. And uh, most people today are always in light. The, the, uh, the light, the blue light that we get from our phones, from our computers, most of the times. And so you just find that that brightness destroys the retinal walls. And so you develop macular degeneration. 
the retina begin to reducing and resizing and so you cannot see very well okay we have a hope in rosemary tea you can use drops of rosemary or if you have a macular degeneration again you can use the uh, you can use an eye drop made of of castor oil and uh, some salt the himalayan salt and put it into your eyes in the morning and in the night you can apply some honey raw honey in your eyes you can apply uh, the acacia leaf tea and periwinkle tea for macular degeneration make sure that you be very determined you need foods that are rich in biotin the soybeans uh, milk tea you need uh, a lot of nuts the almond nuts the pecan nuts brazilian nuts the macadamia nuts lower in make sure that you lower the intake of peanuts in your system when you are having macular degeneration and then you can also make this solution made from uh, sea salt a pinch a, a tablespoon of, of sea salt in a half a glass of uh, of spring water and then you squeeze one lemon medium sized lemon and you use vegetable glycerin you use about 10 ml of vegetable glycerin and take it in i tell you you put that drop in your eyes able to reduce the pressure in the optic nerves as well as cleanse your nerves if you have dry eyes you put some uh, some castor oil or some vegetable glycerin if you have cystitis, uh, stitis, sorry, um, uh, where your eyes are, are sometimes dry and also having some white spots, you'll have to wash your eyes in Himalayan salt water every day, twice a day to make sure that your system regenerates. And after washing, you apply the, uh, the oil that, uh, that comes from custard. That is all and blessings till our next class.